You're responding to the 100 block of Bourbon Street or a drunk male that's down and out. What's a night in New Orleans if you're not going to Bourbon Street to pick up a Signal 19? Everybody's drunk down there. Everyone. Yeah, like everybody. <laughs> we, would, <laughs> we would never leave that just even one block of Bourbon Street if we had to bring every drunk person to the hospital. <laughs> in a stampede is extremely dangerous. No one knows where to go. No one knows where they're going. Everyone is scared. We are in the direct line of fire of whatever this could be. I'm looking for PD. And we're gonna just hold off a second, see if we're needed. New Orleans, 911. Boom, 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 and then again. Gunfire on bourbon. Please hurry, please hurry. I must have heard about 10 shots. There's one, two, three, there are three people down. Oh my God. All right, JG 47 49 10. Uh, it's reported shots fired. And all you can see is caution. People are running all over the place trying to get away from there. Let's do the thing. We're getting these updates, and now my primary concern is management of multiple patients, potential MCI situation. Like, are there going to be more people shot than there are providers available to take them to the hospital? All right. Oh. This one, 32, 47, we're on scene. All right, officer, who's right, shot? Who's shot? So far, I've got one in the leg. leg. Right here, right there in the shot? leg. Okay, check him out. Right now, he's number one. Hey, sir, sir, have you been shot? Where? In the leg somewhere. Somewhere? Yeah, somewhere in the leg. Uh, All right, can you lower it? Can you lower it? Okay, no, no, okay. Which one are you headed to? So we got two activations that we can take. Uh, the one with three GSWs is in the Bourbon Heat Courtyard, if you guys want to head to that one. Probably. Apple and Chase already have two patients, so their hands are pretty much full. Thank you. Coming through, coming through, coming through. As soon as I round that corner and cross that police tape, I just see bodies on the ground. Where's the other ones? That one's over there. Look that way. Well, you can show us an area. Damn, they spread out everywhere, huh? Chase, you putting on a tourniquet? Yeah. All right, just in the leg. Nowhere else? Yeah. All right. Bro, he's your junk in the right space, furniture in the right room. He's about to get real tight. Oh, yeah. Sorry, bro. Uh, 32, 47, tourniquet. 3, 2, 5, 1. We're going to have two patients. Both are activations. So there's going to be one more patient. It doesn't meet activation criteria. If you can get the other unit at Bourbon and Orleans to come pick them up. Our patient on the stretcher was shot in the upper buttock, lower back area near a ton of vital organs. And I already know there was a lot of blood loss. In addition to that, our patient that's sitting in the chair has been shot multiple times, once in the arm and twice in the leg. He's also had an extreme amount of blood loss. I'm gonna start taking all this off you to see if you're shot anywhere else and then we're gonna get some vital signs, okay? Oh, this bitch hurts so bad. Are you allergic to anything? Oh, come on, please. <laughs> it hurts real bad. You can feel this? I can feel all that. All right. Come on, please. We're leaving, baby. We have two very critical patients. They're bleeding out and going into shock. So these patients need to be in the hospital immediately. 
So, Nemec, I'm thinking we throw him on the bench seat. Uh, I'll take care of him if you want to go help Chase. Happy and need me or no. Um, can that Just person get here on their own? We can spine board him. You want to spine board him? Do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll spine board him. I'll hold him on the cop then, because he's going to be a higher priority. Leads him out the way. We're going to load him on ours. Oh, what's up? Hey, bro. What's up, my man? All right, can you scoot over there for you? We do, so uh, he's gonna go in the bench seat. Even though I'm relatively new to the department, when responding to inevitable chaos like this, it's important to remember that we are the calm in the chaos. If we don't remain calm, everything falls apart and people don't get the help they need. So good. How are you? It's amazing yeah. now that it's over. I mean, it's both good and sad how efficient we are at these mass shootings. Mm -hmm. well, strong work, you guys. Yeah, yeah, strong work. Like, one of mine's gonna be perfectly fine, but one of them went to the OR because he was shot multiple times. I heard y'all took him out on a bar chair? On a bar chair. He a was vessel. already sitting. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, can't walk, we gotta get into the truck, can't use the stretcher, the other guy needs the stretcher. Lego? I'm absolutely impressed by the teamwork tonight. We did our job, we did it quickly, we did it effectively, and then we got out of there. I just went to the closest body that was to me. That's kind of how it is on yeah. those scenes. You just find one, you never know. After such chaotic scenes, it's super vital to debrief with each other. I mean, it's a constant cycle of us trying to become better, and those moments where we get to sit down and talk with each other, they're so vital for our patient care and for our own well-being. But the thing is, you're going in there to try to help somebody, but there's still stuff going on. There's still like active people out there. That's what I told Chase before we got there. I was like, they might say that this scene is safe, but like, is, is it really ever safe? Is it really? Like, ever yeah, this safe? this is. We're gonna consider this warm. And the wildest thing was, people were still partying, like literally in the same block over. We're still drinking, sipping, watching it. Oh, they're there to have a good time. And That's not... like just a show for everybody. favorite part of high school yeah. is marching in the parade. One in the band, I don't know. And I was a cheerleader. Oh. Yes! 32, 32. Stop delivering now. Band member down. Nick and I are standing up watching one of the parades outside of the truck, and we get a call for one of the band members that is now down. Where is it? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna have to bring the stretcher across the parade route. I don't know. When you're in a marching band during Mardi Gras, you are marching several miles every day. So it can be a dangerous situation for somebody who may have a pre existing medical condition. Look, yeah, they are. 32, 32 on scene. 17 year old. Not too good, huh? When somebody passes out, you want to rule out the most life-threatening emergency that you can get. So first off, see if they can wake up. See what their speech pattern is. Make sure it's not neurological. Get some vital signs. See what's going on with their body so you can kind of plan a course of action to help this person. Nick, are we crossing the route? The challenges of, you know, actually picking someone up on the parade route is your crowd. It's like being in the middle of a riot. You have to stay focused, keep yourself and your patients safe, and be able to get them into your truck without, you know, any further harm. So we crossing the road or what? I don't know how old she is. 17. 17? Yeah, she can go to Tulane. Hey, how are you feeling? Can we have back there? Give us just a minute, all right? Can you tell me your name? Gabby? Are you hurting anywhere? No. You were marching in the parade? Yeah. You gonna be all right, sweetie. So did you see what happened? No. The parts of the kids, they said that she didn't show any signs, anything, she just hit the ground. Any possibility you could be pregnant, sweetie? No? OK. There's always a little bit of relief when their eyes are open and they're speaking. You know, this, this person looks OK right now. So, you know, they're not dead. And that's a great thing. Um, I can work with that. I think you dehydrated is what happened. Probably from, you know, wearing the jumpsuit and everything, being hot. Which is interesting. You missed it. 
talking about the parade? The so end? I, I That's what you said? Uh, of the parade? Uh, Aw, yeah, are you a senior? Aw, like boo. Feeling any better? She's upset because she's missing the end of the parade. <coughs> she's a senior. You know, our hearts go out to Gabby because she works so hard for this and her experience got stolen from her from a medical issue. 32, 32, left too late. Well, are we going to Bourbon Street? Yeah, we're going to Bourbon Street, 23-year-old female, unconscious. It says breathing, but patient is unresponsive. Have have normal breathing. She's probably drunk. Yeah, no. Either yeah. drunk or someone, God forbid, put something in her drink. drink. Yo, you never know, man. Yep. Down there, you you definitely don't know. You saw, you always gotta watch like who who you get drinks from. Like I don't ever take drinks from yep. strangers. I don't like none of that. Like I I get my own drinks unless it's like you know if you buy me a drink that's fine. You know. Yeah. Unfortunately, we get this call all the time. Young females down on Bourbon Street. Yes, it could be alcohol related, but we always got to keep in our mind that she possibly could have got drugged. We got to check for all the signs. Here we go. Into the code. Here we go. Oh, God, people, get out the way. Oh, thank you, man. You really, you really helped me there. I personally like responding to the calls in the French Quarter. I like the mayhem. I like working in mayhem like that. See him right there? Yeah. You can show us on scene. Uh, what up, boss? Y'all gonna need to bring a stretcher because yeah, yeah. she's out of it. Go. When I pull up on scene, the first thing I see is this female hunched over in a pedicab, and Bourbon Street is packed. The crowd is getting really rowdy. So we need to get this patient up and in the back of the truck fast. Hey! Oh! Yeah. Hey! Most of these calls on Bourbon Street, they're easy calls, but it's the bystanders that make it worse. They get mad, they start yelling, and when they get in the middle of it, they make it more dangerous sometimes than it actually is. I make sure I don't get hit. Back up. Sir, hey, sir, please back up. I need you to step back so we can take care of this patient. Back up! Please back up now. My name is Angie. She's okay. 24. She has been for long. There's an unruly crowd forming around me, David, and our patient. We need to get her up on the stretcher and inside the truck where it's safe. So sorry. You all right, baby? We're going to take care of you, all right? Don't worry about it. Hey, does anything hurt you? No. No? All right. Hey, I'm going to sit you up in case you, you vomit, OK? Miss Angie, right, baby? Angie, yep. All right, baby. We're going to take care of you, OK? So sorry. Don't be sorry. You don't have to, you don't have to be sorry. Yeah, let's do that. I'm just going to hang this over your head, OK? There you go. I'm going to start an IV and give you some fluids and everything, too, OK? All right, baby? Are you allergic to anything? No. No? All right. I have a feeling that this patient was not drugged. She just had a little bit too much to drink tonight. So we're gonna get a set of vitals on her and give her some fluids to get her hydrated again. So you visiting from Pennsylvania? Yes. All right. How you like New Orleans so far? Awesome. A little too much, huh? <laughs> a little too much partying right now, huh? Yes. This is nothing new for us. Everybody tries to drink New Orleans dry. When they come here walking down Bourbon Street, double fisting hurricanes, I'm like, you're gonna be in my unit next. What'd you I do did. tonight? Uh, like, how much you had to drink? Do you need drugs? No, I just. You can tell us you're not gonna get in trouble. Oh, the coke. Rum and coke? So, rum and coke? I just got a little <laughs> up. <laughs> I have three kids. I need to get out. I got three kids, too. I can relate to this patient because she has three kids. I had three kids young. You love them, but you also need a break. So we're gonna run her up to the hospital so she can be monitored while she sobers up. I'm so sorry, guys. Hey. I just need to have a good time. And you did. I worked so hard being a mom. <coughs> I needed a break. Baby, I completely understand that. I just think you need to turn out like this. So tell me, what does that mean to you? That right there, that tattoo. I like that. Just stay focused yeah, in life. Yeah, I like that. Don't matter what anybody says. 
make sure that life is worth it. Hell yeah, I like that. I tell people to always put their head up, no matter what. I do. I had three kids at 23, and I didn't expect it. But it's the best thing in the world. <laughs> I didn't expect to be in this ambulance right now, but it's like a break from reality. I think I'm throw up now. Here, right here. You, baby, stop. You're all right. We got you. All right? There you go. You feel better? Yeah. All right. I'm hopeful that she actually takes a lesson from this. You can't drink New Orleans dry. Don't even try. But keep your head up. Have fun. You got three young kids to take care of. You cleared your head down here. Go back up to Pennsylvania and be a great mom. Woo. You feel better now? Yes. Good. I didn't mean to make everybody worry. Hey, you, guys you are okay? Great. Your friends are a little worried. Yeah, though. your friends were. I know. You can't out drink the city. You definitely can't. You can try, but you know what? There's always more, baby. <laughs> be safe, be strong. Let's do this. Get that stretcher in here. You're gonna bleed to death. Ransom <laughs> out. Ransom out. No, they're not dead. I can work with that.